Welcome to a Tilt webinar with the MFL Department of Swavesley Village College teaming up a collaborative depart departmental response to remote learning, sharing practical ideas, tools, tricks and tips. So this is part of our technology in language teaching webinar series, which has been going on for quite a long time. I am Helen Myers. I'm chair of the London branch of the Association for Language Learning. We always thank Heike Philp and Linguascope for helping us in setting these up. But in particular, we thank Joe Dale, who's brought everybody together for this series. Joe, would you like to introduce yourself before you later introduce the presenters? I would love to, Helen, and thank you ever, ever so much, everyone, for joining us on this very wet and rainy uh, uh, Saturday afternoon uh, for our latest Tilt webinar, which I'm very excited about. Um, it's my pleasure to uh, to go to go around the scouting um, departments and individual people who I think will. Uh, uh, be able to present lots of really interesting ideas around um, the context we find ourselves uh, in at the moment and uh, it's fantastic that we have Swayze um, Village College of today, the MFL department, absolutely brilliant stuff. Um, as part of my, my day job I, um, I run webinars to, uh, to make a living and in the chat as per normal I've just put in a list of example sessions that uh, you can have a look at if there's anything that I can help you with in relation to remote teaching uh, there's a whole list of um, 18 sessions there with lots of different um, tools and ideas um, on how you can make the most of um, the situation at the moment. And I'd also really encourage you to um, share your ideas on the MFL Twitter RT hashtag because that's what this, all, this is all about. It's everyone together. But um, over to you, Helen, to um, talk about um, AWL. OK, so those of you who are familiar with these webinars, um, as you know, I ask you now to use the chat to drum up support for people to join AWL, the Association for Language Learning. There's a very easy link for you to join. It's really worthwhile joining to be able to get a magazine. It's just come out this week to be part of a community. And also you're going to get a massive reduction for the language conference, which is coming up in March. So for members, it really is not very expensive at all. It is a lot more if, you, if you're not a member. So please, please do join. And if you come along, and join then you'll get a 10 percent discount so that's coming up in march here though so, um london association um association of language learning for london branch we've got quite a lot lined up so um gosh there is a lot lined up isn't there so next week we've got wednesday <laughs> the third of our um workshops for those of us who use microsoft so teams we've got a third one and there's going to be a fourth one after us but at the moment we're deciding either the following week or half term i'm not sure but really we're learning loads and it's been lovely to see you Sabine and Rebecca there as well. Um, then on Friday, we've got a very special one for people who are early starting off in their teaching career, but particularly on Friday, we're starting at 7.30 and Nick Mayer is going to be doing a session on applying for your first job. So if you are doing that position or if you know people who are in that position, please could you share the link to these webinars and you'd be very welcome to come to that. And then we've got two more tilt ones which are coming up before we break up for half term oh no that's after half term isn't it 20th of february um but we've got uh, sonia and Jimena who are coming so really looking forward to them as well i'll be putting in the chat the link but the fact you've got here already you probably do know the link about where you'll find out about, out about these webinars and now over to joe to introduce our speakers fantastic so um uh, so both sabine and rebecca have been really really amazing sharers during uh the pandemic and, and prior to the pandemic as well and the MFL Swayze Twitter account if you're not following it already I'd really encourage you to to follow it so I was really delighted when uh, both Sabine and Rebecca um, agreed to my uh, my invitation to do a, a tilt webinar for us it's lovely as well to have a sort of a, a departmental approach um, being sort of laid out uh, step by step as well I think that's absolutely fantastic so th if there's any people here in a department who'd like to present as a department uh, do get in touch let us know uh, it's wonderful that that uh, we've got so many people here and um, at the time of speaking we've got um, just under 100 people uh, watching live which is fantastic and probably a few more on YouTube as well so it just shows how many people are interested in this uh, session so I will stop talking I will hand over to um, either Sabine or Rebecca to get us started and so much for doing this we're really looking forward to the presentation if you have any questions as Helen has said Put them in the chat we're going to do all the questions at the end we won't be interrupting at all we're just going to, we'll watch the sit back and enjoy and watch the presentation and then we'll do a bit of q a at the end if that's okay but do put your questions in the chat and i'll collect them as per normal so over to you sabine if you want okay to so i'll be sharing my screen now so can we all see the screen yes okay brilliant so i'm just um 
Here we go. Okay, well, thank you uh, very much, Helen and uh, Joe, for the intro. Uh, so hi, everybody, uh, and thank you so much for um, to be here and for giving up some part of your Saturday afternoon to attend our webinar. Uh, we're really honored to be here and grateful that we can contribute um, to the sharing ethos of the MFL Twitter at Sea community, and we hope the session will be helpful. Uh, we've gained uh, so much uh, knowledge this year with all the uh, webinars and the Linguascope uh, webinars as well, so thank you for the support. Um, so we're going to present um, some work we've been doing as a team, and um, in response to the situation we've been um, in since March. Uh, we're going to share how we've been using Teams uh, and loads of different tech uh, that we've discovered and rediscovered uh, and our journey with remote and hybrid uh, learning. Okay, uh, so it has been, um, yeah, it's been indeed an epic journey of tech discovery and the tech we've used uh, has enabled our work to be much more efficient and collaborative. So as a department, we've always, um, work collaboratively and shared ideas and resources, uh, but lockdown has taken our collaborative approach to the next level, I would say. Um, our school is based in Cambridgeshire and uh, we are Village College. Um, we, our students are ranging from 11 to 16. Uh, we don't have six formers as they go to Cambridge for six more, six form. Uh, so our school, um, we've had teams, um, uh, so it was brought up by the trust around four years ago, uh, but we never really used it as such. Uh, so Teams appears one day, uh, appeared one day on our desktop. Then uh, we had to move all our resources from our old VLE uh, onto Teams. And then uh, that was about the extent on our use of Teams prior to March uh, 2020. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about how we've set up our Teams in the presentation and I will be um, showing you with a demo team uh, what's working well for us, for our students and what we've learned along the way. Uh, Becky is going to share our collaborative approach to resource planning and uh, creations and share some great tech tips uh, and our favorite uh, websites. Um, so in the first lockdown, uh, going back um, a bit, um, on how our journey started, uh, we only used Teams with our students. So we had to learn overnight how to use Teams. Uh, we did have some whole school training uh, a couple of uh, days before the school shut in March, um, like a Wednesday afternoon, uh, one hour. Uh, it was quite frantic. Um, our uh, classes uh, suddenly were populated uh, onto Teams and appeared on our desktop. And we learned how to activate them and assign work. Uh, we didn't use at the time the class notebook feature um, as we actually didn't know it existed at the time. And we only re realized it um, around June last year, uh, you know, following watching some uh, TED webinars presented by Jane, uh, Sandra Actas, and uh, Jane uh, Bassnet, Sandra Actas, and uh, Adeline Moston. Um, so at that point in June, as a department, we thought, um, so that was too late to introduce it when uh, we went lockdown one, it was June, but we decided it would become our priority for September uh, to add class notebook to teams for our students and move towards a more paperless uh, classroom, especially for prep. So prep is our homework uh, policy. Uh, our students don't have any iPads or laptops. So we set up all our classes on Class Notebook and we, um, so we worked with our students and taught them how to use the Class Notebook feature. Um, and surprisingly, um, it worked quite well and students responded well and accessed everything uh, pretty well. I anticipated much more uh, chaos actually. Um, and uh, we assigned our prep via Teams uh, and distributed class notebook pages. And that's something we will uh, show um, in live how we, uh, I'm gonna demonstrate that uh, shortly. I will also talk about how co-ownership um, allows um, a really collaborative approach to um, um, and departmental approach uh, of working and how we're using post um, and our organization of class notebook. Okay, so I'm going to go into Teams now. 
and show you uh, how this works. So that's my um, team. And if you are familiar, and if you have teams, you will be familiar with it. So uh, just before I go into my demo box, so that's uh, all the teams I own or co-own. Uh, so we, so that's quite important in terms of if we want to work uh, collaboratively. Um, uh, so as a, I'm the curriculum leader of the department, uh, so I co-own every single team, and that's my way to, uh, you know, see what's happening, track uh, track students. Uh, when I I receive every notification for any assignment which is posted, and I can see, uh, you know, good practice, and I can share it back across the department when I spot uh, something really good. And um, we all uh, co-own teams. Um, so that we can assign work to more to not only our classes but other classes. So we've divided the workload and the planning. Um, so each uh, member of the team is responsible for one year group. So. Um, for example, Jess Golding, who is in the uh, meeting, is responsible for year seven. So she owns all the year seven teams and plans resource uh, with another colleague, Catherine Monument, all the year seven work. Um, and we are responsible to feedback, mark, and, uh, you know, on our students. Um, so that's working quite well. We've used our Bitmoji to personalize the Teams. Uh, teams is not really intuitive or not very student friendly vis uh, or visually appealing. Uh, and it's quite nice uh, for students to see their teachers uh, owning the Teams. They can spot straight away their languages team because we're using our Bitmoji. And for me, it's quite easy because I own like over 50 teams, some are hidden uh, below. Um, it's easy for me it's if I want to, uh, without looking at the timetable, track a certain class with certain students, I know exactly uh, where people are. Um, and when we co-teach uh, co a class, we've used our friend emoji, uh, like here I'm sharing this year nine way with Becky, and here's our little uh, friend emoji icon. Uh, so let's go into Teams, and um, so that's my demo team, so I'm not going to reveal anything. Um, I'm just going to move that. Um, right, um, so actually I can't see at the top, I need to move the taskbar. Right, so at the top in Teams, so that's uh, the way it's set up, and you'll be, I'm sure, super familiar with it. You've got your posts, your files, your class notebook that needs to be activated if you want to use it, assignment, grades. So two things I'm going to show, um, show you today is first the virtual classroom. So we've uh, created our virtual classroom in, um, in, I'm not sure if I, I should take that down. Okay, I'm gonna just iconize. Okay, um, so we've used our virtual classroom um, in the first lockdown. Uh, the way we used it, so it was an hyperlinked PowerPoint that, and every week we would distribute um, our lessons to students. They had to click on the link. Uh, so that's something uh, a lot of people have been using and uh, we've been inspired by uh, the community. And in September, um, going back to school, we all went back to school. We realized we started to uh, receive quite a few emails of students asking for the work because they were absent, they were isolating. And uh, rather than us individually mailing um, students, we uh, put our virtual classroom as a website, uh, as a tab uh, options here. And we trained our students to, uh, if they were absent, uh, to directly go onto Teams, click on their um, virtual classroom uh, tab, and here, click on the whiteboard, and that would take them to uh, our OneDrive folder which got all the lesson um, week by week. So that was the autumn term, it's a bit slow, and you would have a week by week each uh, lesson for students to um, go and to uh, refer to. So that's um, the way, so we'll share the formula. Um, so what's important is to save the PowerPoint uh, in your OneDrive, and then you can access your PowerPoint and share it and access a shareable link. And once you've got the link, you need to add a formula to turn this, uh, this PowerPoint into a website. So students don't need to uh, open the PowerPoint in slide view, view mode or anything. They just click and click on the link. And because we are working uh, quite collaboratively and um, once we've set up the virtual classroom in each team, 
there's only one teacher who, is, uh, who creates a PowerPoint lesson for the week. So, for example, I create your nine. Uh, and I will save my PowerPoint into my OneDrive for your nine, and I distribute the lesson to every single your nine French teams by one click. So no one has to upload the PowerPoint into their own teams. Uh, they can access because the folder is accessible via all the virtual classroom for each team, each year group. Okay. Uh, another things we've been using is Quizlet. So again, in September, we've uh, su subscribed to Quizlet. We didn't have Quizlet before. We had uh, Vocab Express and other um, websites for vocabulary. But this year, we moved on to uh, Quizlet. And uh, the way we've done it as well, in response to our students who sometimes uh, feel or may feel overwhelmed with too many uh, websites, um, and we wanted really to use Teams as much as possible to have everything in one place. So uh, again, we've put the tabs at the top. And again, the way we've done it, we've uh, assigned, um, so on Quizlet, I've got it open. Uh, I've got all my classes, and for example, that's my year seven. And that's the invitation link. So that's the that's not the link for the website Quizlet. That's the link for this specific class because I want to track my students, track how many members I've got and their progress, and if they are doing their vocabulary. So I've used I copied that joining code, and when uh, I'm on my tab on Quizlet, so that would be the plus. And also there is a Quizlet. Um, so there, there's already a Quizlet, but we haven't used Quizlet as a, an app. We've used, again, the website here, and we pasted the joining code uh, into each team so that each class has their own uh, access to their own class um, and can, we, we, um, rather than us sharing a link with our students, they were joining um, their class just via Teams. Um, signing up to request access. And every week, you've got this week's vocabulary, and you can see all the vocabulary they've been learning we, uh, week on week. Um, so we don't have to share any links with them. We tell them, go on Quizlet via your team tabs. So uh, we've used Insights. Insights is really invaluable. We've actually used it on uh, Thursday. We had parents evening. Uh, so that's obviously a demo team. I've only got two students. And I haven't really assigned any work. Uh, but it's a great way um, to track students' activity. And that's just, again, in plus side, adding insight is a great way to track your student and see uh, who is not attending your live lesson, who is not um, accessing the, your French uh, team or your team uh, and doing the work. And you've got really good information on uh, how long they're spending time on each task, what documents they are viewing, and all about their engagement. Okay, so I'm going to now show you um, how we've used our class notebook briefly. And there's, um, we are still in our uh, early days of discoveries and we are still uh, learning every day. So it's a bit slow. So I might go in the app. Uh, so I'm going to go in the app. So when you're on Teams, I'll show you. Maybe. So if you click on the class notebook and it opens, normally it's much quicker, but it's because we're on Zoom. You will have your class notebook and you will have the opportunity um, to open it via browser, via app. So I quite like to work in the app. And so that's um, a dem the demo cl class notebook for the fifth webinar. Um, so just... Uh, to show you how we've been using it. So in the first part of September to December, we've used it for prep. Uh, and our GCSE students, uh, we've subcategorized uh, their folders into theme one, theme two, theme three. And it was really to get all the students to get all their written paragraph for their uh, writing preparation and speaking preparation um, in a nice organized uh, folder in one place. Um, and we've created in January this folder, remote classwork um, for students, for us to post weekly lesson and for them to complete the classwork. So they've got effectively two, uh, two sections, which is one for classwork and one for prep, which is a homework. Um, so I'll show you. Um, so we make a lesson, we create everything on PowerPoint because we're really used to a PowerPoint. We've got loads of resources already made on PowerPoint. And the way we um, um, 
one student uh, to work is uh, what was missing from our lesson in the first lockdown. We didn't, students were ending uh, work on um, photos, exercise book, word documents, PowerPoint, and it was really difficult to um, feedback access. Everything was coming via email, via Teams. Whereas now uh, we put the PowerPoint lesson directly onto their class notebook and they complete their task on their class notebook in their class work. So that's really replacing the paper, like the exercise book, uh, physical exercise book. Uh, so that's one example of a lesson we've pasted uh, in. And so I've created first my uh, lesson into class notes. That's another example. Uh, this one is a year seven lesson. Uh, so we embed the video lesson. We use a screen classify. Um, which is a really good recording uh, app, uh, which pastes directly your video into YouTube. Um, and so we embed our YouTube video lesson in the class notebook, then we've got a sentence built down. And obviously Becky will talk much more about how we make uh, our lesson and resources. And uh, some a few things we are doing, uh, we've noticed students were ticking the work uh, so to show us that they had learned their vocabulary. Um, so we've inserted those little uh, boxes now to give them a you know, to sh uh, give them a sense of achievement. So um, for example, this one, uh, I have looked at the flashcard and translated, I have listened to the pronunciation, I have uh, typed in the correct translation and they can just tick. Uh, so that's with a to-do tag, uh, which is here. And there's more uh, available tags um, on a class notebook. Um, what we are trying to do and we, we are mindful of is uh, trying to set up work which uh, doesn't prompt our uh, students to go on to Google Translate. Uh, so a lot of tasks uh, for us are, uh, and the class notebook really, really enable um, this to um, happen, is to use a draw function, so match up by coloring onto the page. Um, Lots of word scramble, so they can't really uh, use Google Translate for that. They've got to do the work. Um, rock climbing uh, translation, um, which have been shared um, by Frabas, so I think, and uh, uh, on Twitter uh, a lot. Um, so all those activities that we are doing that have been shared, um, by, uh, we're putting everything. So just to show you very briefly, uh, what, uh, how students are working and uh, what it looks like when uh, students are doing the work. So that's one example um, of a year nine lesson. And uh, when we embed our PowerPoint, we make sure that um, the picture is set as background so students can directly write or uh, highlight on the pages. So that's quite an important stage. Uh, and they just complete each task. Uh, so uh, that's the task here is to roll the FlipPT randomizer uh, and independently. So students are, were quite used to this type of activity in lesson. So we are trying to remodel what we would have been done in lesson and, and they uh, kind of know what uh, they should be doing. Uh, and here, this student has been doing some translation and um, directly. Here, uh, again, you can see they've been highlighting each chunk for translation. Um, and some students do prefer uh, doing it in their classwork. And that's where they uh, print the PowerPoint lesson, which again looks exactly like that, uh, and write directly in their exercise book. And they paste photos of their work into the class notebook. So that's a tangled translation. That's a tick box um, activity. Again, uh, students are drawing. So another example here. Um, so again, same thing, word searches, word scramble, um, pyramid translation. Um, year seven were, you know, working with a pen. A lot of year seven seems to have uh, pens and um, a year 10. We feedback on the class notebook. We use uh, audio feedback. Uh, we use uh, stickers. So we made our stickers. Uh, back up. Um, and uh, just uh, very easily. Uh, so we would not normally mark the, um, the class work. So we are just uh, making a positive comment to encourage them to complete the work. 
Um, so very quickly, if I wanted to set up um, a page, uh, as I said, so I would uh, create a new page uh, and insert the printout, because that's something a lot of people are asking on Facebook, the printout of my PowerPoint, and I'm not going to do it uh, now. So I would just insert, and that would paste automatically my PowerPoint like that. And all I would need to do is maybe add um, like the tick boxes and maybe a few uh, task name, uh, task number in between each PowerPoint slide. Okay, so I'm going to go back into uh, Teams to show you how I would assign now this page. Uh, and a lot uh, of schools are using Class Notebook on their own because they've been used uh, to Class Notebook. But our students were, uh, are used and have been trained to use uh, Teams and to complete assignments. So um, we want to, to distribute all the Class Notebook pages via the ICE assignment pages. Uh, and this way they get a notification. So if you distribute on class notebook, nothing tells the there's nothing to tell the student that they're receiving some work. But if you distribute by assignment, then they get obviously a notification. Um, so I will create my assignment. And because again, uh, I, uh, I plan for your nine. Um, so I would add my resource directly from my class notebook. Um, so rather than uh, adding something from your OneDrive, a PowerPoint or Word doc, here's your class notebook uh, feature. And in Teachers Only, uh, I'll find my work um, in Remote Classwork, and I'll assign this page on environment that I just showed you. And then I could just uh, put it in the Remote Classwork folder, and that's done, and that's going in. And here as a tag, I like to put a classwork or prep so that it's a reminder of what work is uh, what. And um, here, when we assign to classes, um, I'll assign to every single year nine classes I would have. So, um, so that my colleagues don't have to assign the work uh, for year nines, but they assign works for other year groups. Okay, and just very briefly, on Teams, I'm just going to show you how we've been using the posts. Uh, so we used to, uh, so um, I've shared a few things that we've been doing um, recently. So that's, for example, we've been using posts to promote uh, cultural uh, challenges. Um, so that's a German uh, challenge to make Austrian donuts. I won't say it because I'm not a German speaker. Uh, that's uh, for Tuesday. We've uh, got a crepe uh, challenge uh, for students to take part. Um, we've been using post uh, as a reminder for homework. Um, and so again, I've used the, um, the virtual classroom as a banner here. And um, we've used post um, for maybe to uh, when after marking the work for a week, when we've noticed students made the same mistake or when we've noticed there was maybe uh, something missing from our lesson. So for example, here there was a uh, word R. Uh, so we asked whether the student knew a design because it, it, we didn't put it in the sentence builder. And Becky likes to share, um, I'm just gonna move that. A top tip with students as well. So we use posts to share, uh, well, anything that could help our students uh, with the technology. Uh, for, for instance, this one was using accents. Um, and our students are really grateful and often comment with emojis. Um, and um, that prevent us from uh, emailing. We've realized students are not uh, really using email. So post is quite important. And again, uh, when we create a post, so that's on conversation here, the A, and you've got conversation, but we want to create an announcement rather than a conversation so that allow us to post in multiple channels. So when I would put, for example, uh, promote uh, the crepe challenge. I posted in every single French team. So with one click, uh, I could access every single student, uh, French student via Teams. And that's why co-ownership is quite important. OK, so I think I'm going to hand in uh, over to Becky, uh, who is going to uh, continue with uh, the presentation. Okay, hi. I'm going to stop sharing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I am going to share my screen and hope. Oh, I need to put my sound back on. 
Sorry about that. So share screen, share sound. It's already set up. Great, perfect. Uh, okay, so let's go to here. Um, so thank you, uh, Sabine, and um, I want to talk about the collaborative lesson planning that we do, and Sabine's talked about how we take a year group each so that we can really focus on uh, quality and continuity, um, and particularly at the moment when most of the students are at home, uh, we're delivering live lessons, we're able to collate classes together and have different various teachers on the same lesson, manning the chat and adding comments and things like that. Um, so the first thing that we focus heavily on, and we do spend quite a lot of time getting right, are our, our sentence builders. And we've seen some great webinars on these, and there's lots of examples that we've uh, seen as well. So things that we've learned along the way, um, obviously making the French stand out. Um, we try and do sort of subtle pop-up, grammar pop-ups for the more able students, so a little extension uh, row there, so they can talk about other people. But we've also learned not, not to put brackets in, and I will show you why we don't put brackets for the English. So I've seen a lot of sentence builds where the English is in brackets. Um, now, the students, we've not uh, given many adjectives there in the middle row there because they've already worked on this previously. So this is just a, a heads up to remind them to agree their adjectives. Um, we do put an image on our sentence builders because we find that after a while the students have had so many sentence builders, they tend to get a little bit lost. And it's just a really quick, easy way for them to identify the topic and the sentence builder that they need to write for that particular paragraph. Now, once we've got that right, we then move on to Quizlet and Flippity. Uh, and I know we're quite well known for uh, our flip, uh, you know, being Flippity fans, and I shall show you why, hopefully. And this is where all the magic starts to happen. So it, these sites are really enable us to do a lot of uh, language retrieval activities, uh, modeling, uh, and things like that. And we start off all our lessons with uh, sentence builders, and then we go into manipulating the language. So I am going to go to our sentence builder and show you hopefully very quickly how easy and quickly it is. So here, because there's no brackets, I'm just going to copy and um, select that language and go into Quizlet. So that's our first port of call is going to Quizlet. You create, so go to your, we've got an account and we, uh, Sabine has shown you, we've attached it to Teams as well. So we go to create, um, here we go, tilt demo, uh, import the language, paste that in. And then all I need to do here is just make sure that I sort of bring up the definition onto the, the same line as the French and then press tab. And that way it identifies what's the French or whichever language you're using, using of course, and the English, and you should see beneath there, those definitions popping in here underneath, there we are. So that has enabled me to drop the language in. And here they are, you can put your own voice into it if you want to, you can insert images, it does have a voice attached to it already. Um, and if you suddenly think, oh, I've made a mistake, or I've duplicated something, or you want to add cards, that's really simple. So if you want to put some, um, uh, they go some infinitives if you want them to recognize the verb here and then somebody somewhere in the Quizlet world has created that flashcard already that so that it's really easy and quick to add that and always remember to press create once you've done that so now the students um, will be assigned this uh, through their teams and they can play with this I'm not going to sign it now and the other quick thing, so they can play with it, they can turn the sound on, they can play games. The live active, if the live option is fantastic for our, our games. So go to export now on those three magic dots, go to export. And now I'm gonna copy this, go to Flippity, and this is why we go to the flashcards. So you go to your template. Um, let's open up a copy here and hopefully it won't take too long. There we go. Uh, you need to get rid of the examples that they have in place. There we go. Well, not there we go at all. Let's try again. There we are. Let's do 
we'll leave that. Fantastic. There's one at the bottom, but hey, hey. So if we right click, you don't just paste, you need to paste special and paste your values. And there we go, it drops it into two separate columns. Don't forget to change the language at the top when for reading out, because otherwise it sounds dreadful. We tend to put English on none. And the other top tip we have is label. Please label your cards, other your templates. Otherwise you go back to your Google slides and you can never find them again. So uh, tilt uh, demo, flashcards, and then we publish it. So publish to the web, publish, okay don't need that. And then we go and get the link on the next tab here. So this, after the sentence builder, um, we get the students to then practice. Oh, this is not fun. Uh, it's having trouble loading the spreadsheet. Okay, let's see what we can do. Let's go back there. Let's see if I can take that off. If that's holding it back. There we go. Let's try again. Um, I wonder if that's been tampered with. Let's get into there. Let's try again. So sometimes if you mess with the top two columns, uh, two rows, it can throw the. So there we go. Let's just delete those. I think I might have accidentally deleted something in one of the cells. So if you mustn't touch the blue and the pink rows at the top, otherwise it does sort of throw it a little bit. So again, paste special, paste your values only. Um, you can change the audio, you've done that already. Uh, oh, I'll do it quickly because I need it for the demo. So let's go back to French, uh, none. Okay, so rename, okay, rename, so that you can find it again, uh, publish it to the web and a lot of these things as you do have to learn through trial and error so get the link hopefully it will work this time there we go so the students next activity that we give them is a, a link to this and we remind them to take the sound off. Je m'entends bien avec. So a little robotic way is not too bad. They can learn those flashcards. They can review the list. Of course, you can set colors on it as well. They can practice typing. They can match them all up. And then here is where all the fun stuff happens. So under the more, there are all sorts of other activities. You can create bingo cards, you can create manipulatives, um, you can create crosswords, matching games, the quiz show, uh, the randomizer, scavenger hunts, word clouds. So this is one, again, that we like to do, particularly useful for live lessons so students can translate activities. Um, you can change the pattern of it, you can change the colors, the style, you can put a nice white background and then just copy and then paste that into your lesson. Um, and so I'm gonna show you now some of the uh, other activities that we do with our flashcards. So from flashcards, you've got the word cloud that I showed you. You have um, this word scramble, which you'll have seen uh, Sabine looking and the students love this because it really helps them practice their spellings. You've got quiz shows, again, good for live. You've got word searches where they can highlight it. Um, now the scavenger hunt, yes, of course, you can generate it from the flashcards, particularly useful if you want them to type in English. But if you do want them to type into French, I would recommend going directly to the scavenger hunt template itself, because then, um, like you will have seen on other webinars, the, it's helpful to give a clue and to give the first initial of each word and drop in the accents have found that it's, it's much easier for the students to be able to just copy and paste that into their answer and then fill in the blanks. Um, so these are just examples of activities and how we use those. Now, the other one that you can, again, you can generate from the flashcards is the matching game. Now I prefer to go directly to the matching game template because I like to put backgrounds uh, images uh, onto it, which you can't do if you're just doing it from flashcards. 
And the reason we put the background is because we like to hide a message underneath the um, pairs. So once they've met the pairs, the pairs that they've matched up a pair, the pair disappears. And so slowly they'll get to reveal a secret message hiding behind those. And in order to do that, you need to go to this website here, post images. Um, so if I quickly click on this, I hopefully I can show you what to do. Let's just move this bar. Um, so again, there's a familiar uh, template there that we've used to set up our game. I just let it load, it's still loading and it will eventually come up with some options there. So if I can find the, um, have I closed it down? Possibly, all right. So if I go to, back to my PowerPoint quickly and go to post images. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there we go. So here we are. So you first of all, you want to choose an image, you can create your own image, I find a themed image, I write a message on top. So here's one, the one that we created for En Soudi Tout, which we did for the year eight last week. Uh, it uploads it very quickly. And then I don't know why, but I instinctively felt uh, I went for the direct link. So you copy that direct link and then you drop it into your. Um, here we drop it into the spreadsheet that you have for the matching game. So if you once you've got this spreadsheet loaded up, you'll have the options tab. And under options tab, you'll see there's a background setting. And then this is where you will paste that link. And you can amend the message. So here, felicitation, copy out and translate the message. Um, and so that A gives us a, another layer of proof that they've, they've done the activity as well, which is always helpful. Um, so that is why we go directly to the matching game so that we can personalize the background and hide some secret messages. Um, and the other one that um, I know uh, we were talking about at the beginning that you have to do this directly, you can't do this from the flashcards because you want the words uh, chunked a little bit more. But the randomizers have, have, we've used for a long time in class and the students are very familiar with that practice. So it's been really simple for us to drop these into our remote lessons on OneNote and link it. So the students just click onto the website and there's a little tiny box when you get there that you have to tick so that it enlarges it. But of course, if they're working independently, they don't really need to do that. Uh, and our favorite activities are the tangled translations because we often leave the English in in the sentence builder as well. So sometimes you'll get a, a tangled translation as a result. <clears throat> so they have to <clears throat> translate it into both languages. Does it make sense? Maybe flip a few rows, uh, columns so that it does make sense. Um, and again, for live lessons, it's quite fun for faulty echo activities, um, extension activities as well. So this is why we love Flippity. And what I wanted to bring you on to is how we not just share those flippity resources with um, each other, but other lesson ideas and not just us, but the collaboration really is now, thanks to everyone worldwide, thanks to MFL Twitterati and Facebook groups, you will recognize a number of these activities. So we have created a, a favorite activities menu. It is a PowerPoint, um, which is shared in our OneDrive area. So all of our team can access this. So whenever we come across any great ideas, uh, we'll generate our own activity around it and add it to the list of slides and then simply create a little icon that links to them so that when other people want to use it or need some fresh ideas, they can just come to our um, lesson menu. So you should start to see some things that you will have inevitably seen uh, and social media. So here we use our word clouds at the beginning, we've spoken about those, uh, the sentence builders. Um, here we're gonna, this is a trapdoor that we've, our students are very familiar with using trapdoor activities uh, in class where they would take a highlighter and highlight their options and they, you don't even need to give them instructions anymore, they know what to do. But we are going to be brave and try one uh, next week in a breakout room. I've added the ABC uh, element so that they can quickly jot down notes, um, obviously, because I won't have this printed out. And 
again, with all activities, do try and have an extension element so that they can, those who get ahead at the event can have a go at translating the past tense activities down here. We color code those things. So wish us luck, hope that works. Um, so yeah, there's lots here that spot the difference between texts here, um, the morphing thing on the uh, latest PowerPoint. I love that. So you, now we don't have to, you, you know, question, answer, match up. Again, the students just highlight lines when they're on the OneNote page. And if they're working from the virtual classroom PowerPoint, then they'll get to see the magic where it sort of, if you then, you just need to copy this slide and more press the morph transition and it will, and then just drag your answers to the right place. And then it just naturally transitions it for you. I used to spend hours animating every box before, but now it does it all for you, which is brilliant. Um, and here, these are the ideas that we love and thank you to everybody who's contributed to these because uh, we've you know, really learned a lot from you as well. So thank you so much. Now I'm gonna demonstrate here um, the tick box. So thank you to Esther, because um, we got this template from you, uh, which has been uh, invaluable and our students love it. We've just sort of um, you know, uh, <laughs> changed the title slightly, that's all. Uh, so here we would drop a text in and put some keywords in English in the middle box that the students then have to highlight and find. And then there'll inevitably be a few words left over. So the challenge activity, so students either take the green route or the red route in lessons, they then rewrite the same text and incorporate those missing words. So the fun thing we wanted to show you was photo scan. So if I click here on photo scan, this is a Microsoft part of the Microsoft package. We did need to ask our IT staff to install it on the school system, which was straightforward. And now anybody in our school can just copy this from the Microsoft menu on their computer. Um, I've put it on my taskbar. We use this all the time. Um, so I wanna show you how and why we use it. So Active Learn is the, the book online book that we use. I need to log in again, it's log me out. Uh, okay, so internet's a little slow, so hopefully it will pop up with some pages in a moment. And it's the quickest thing ever to be able to then grab a text um, from, let's see again, let's sign in. Oh, sorry, I'm signing in as Alison. Thanks, Alison. <laughs> um, here we have a shared account, so <clears throat> here we go, Studio Rouge. I want to go and see this out of the way. So when you find a text, uh, let's go to, I know there's one on page 52 that I will be using next week. And I will snip that and let's move that down. So let's go to our lovely snipping tool that everybody likes. We'll open up this snip a bit of text that I need and but it's not quite right for me I want to manipulate it a little bit so uh, let's there you go copy that and then all I need to do is click on my photo scan app that's on my task board click on clipboard and there we go now I can edit that text so I can copy it and I will drop it into the Point. So let's go to the post, the tick box activity that we were looking at. And where are we? Here we go. So here I now just right click and paste that in. And I can change the language, I can manipulate, I can put gap fills, I can up the language, I can increase, you know, it, it increase the level of challenge here. It's not great on. Um, accent so here I would need to replace that so if I go to very quickly just replace uh, QA with um, so Windows 1 uh, just get a little there we go into that M close that up sat there you go, just replace all. So because it is now it's replaced it five times because it, it, it doesn't recognize ac accents very clearly. And then I have an editable text, which has just been fantastic for us uh, to use. So uh, thank you. Uh, there we go. So the, these really is, is about 
less you know this is our menu that we have all the websites that we use again we're looking forward to use this um and thank you to Etonto as well so esther again um expectations and then the last thing which you may have seen before is that this is a piece of work from our year eight students so they we then get them to learn it get ready for an assessment for example and this is taken from a OneNote page and they would then drop this into text debate and play with the language and now text debate we have a group membership which i think is a, what, about 120 pounds for the year um so here is that text you copy it you paste it in we remind the students to go to put the text to speak onto French so that they can also hear their text and then they simply play, press the text debate button and then they can play with their own language which really gives them a huge sense of um, sat satisfaction to see that they can they're hearing their own language they can play with their own language if they're less confident we get them to use fewer tiles so here they need to turn the text to speak um, on Sorry, just move this out of the way. So text to speak uh, on, and then they drag them in the right place and uh, they can manipulate those. If we go back, there's just a whole wealth of games that they can play there. If they want to remove the uh, vowels, for example, they can help practice their spellings. Um, so here, and I think, oh, I'm a bit stuck here. Don't really know what to say next. J'ai passé une semaine géniale à Paris et c'était top. So here, this has been great for our GCSE students, helping them revise paragraphs, for example, and have fun. There's a football game that they love to play, and they just uh, this will be fun. We're looking forward to playing this in some live games as well, uh, live lessons. So they simply just uh, have to answer a question. Je l'ai trouvé for... impressionnant. Okay, so they trouve here they go. So now they get the right to score. So it's a blue team, they're gonna pass, and then oh you know. J'ai visité right la Tour Eiffel avec ma famille. Très bien. So I'm gonna leave that there. Um it's kind of mindful of the time. But these are the comments from the students using Flipperty and Text Debate, and they have really enjoyed it. They enjoyed the variety of tasks um, on OneNote and the, the support it's given them as well to really focus on the, the detail of spellings or the word ordering and the chunking and get them to play with the language they've really thoroughly enjoyed that so i'll very quickly pass uh, back to um miss pichu thank you okay how do i stop stop share there we go you're mute at the moment sabine Okay, so uh, perfect, Helen. Uh, that's actually my, um, I'm really culprit of that. I start all my live lesson on mute. <laughs> and so I speak and speak for five minutes and then I realize that I'm muted. And I've got, uh, yeah, so I'm, uh, yeah, that's my speciality. So we're gonna just quickly finish uh, on live lessons and our go-tos to uh, promote engagement, interactivity, AFL and uh, lift uh, our student spirits at the moment. Um, so again, um, how we've uh, working as a department collaboratively, because we co-own uh, the teams uh, and because we co-plan, um, we plan work for a year group. Um, we we are lucky uh, to be in a position where quite a few classes have got uh, you know a timetable uh, in parallel. So we've got three year tens on Monday morning period one, and we've been doing where possible all the lessons where it's been timetable in a parallel uh, way. We've been co-teaching them, so we would have uh, two or three teachers sometimes uh, teaching uh, the like all the year tens who are timetable uh, period one, and that enables us to uh, read really um, make the, you know, the short moment of live lesson really, really, uh, well, we're trying to do our best with the live lesson. One teacher is teaching and really focusing on teaching the new content. One teacher is organizing the chat and answering questions. And one teacher might be more in charge of the games or spiral. Um, and uh, obviously, I realize we are in a very luxurious position where uh, we are working very collaboratively and we've got, you know, 
uh, the opportunity to do that. But it's been really good for our students who have two or three teachers. But it's also been really good for us to observe each other and picking up ideas and sharing ideas of how to do things in a live lesson and to also take a step back on our own practice and observe. Uh, because when you're teaching live lesson, we don't really have, uh, we don't really see what we're doing and we haven't been trained to teach live lessons. Uh, we've only been starting to train uh, recently. Uh, so looking at colleagues delivering, we can really see what's working well or not well. Uh, also on Friday, for example, I was teaching a live lesson with our PGC trainee, uh, internet dropped down. So I was able to uh, take over uh, the lesson and then carry on. And um, so yeah, so live lessons for us, we haven't used, we haven't done live lesson in the first lockdown. We've done live games. Um, you know, weekly, but we were not delivering live lesson. So the way we're doing it is we're preparing the lesson that you've seen uh, for the week. We pre-record, we um, assign the lesson uh, for the week uh, via Teams on the class notebook. And uh, therefore we don't do everything live. Uh, so we will do the first lesson of the week. I was gonna have three lesson. Uh, we'll do a long live lesson, maybe 40 minutes where we model the vocabulary of the sentence builder and um, do lots of activities around the vocab. And then a second lesson, uh, we need to call them uh, at the beginning, take the register, um, and maybe we'll stay five, 10 minutes to one game and sell a lesson. We might do a plenary, uh, but we, the students are working independently at their own pace through their task. And we are there to on the chat to answer questions. So the things that have been working well for us are a classroom screen. Um, we're gonna look at how we are using the chat. Uh, two favorite is uh, Mentimeter and Spiral, the quick fire light and a live game. So that's really, uh, that's, well, it's still uh, an embryo of uh, what's working well and how to structure a live lesson. But uh, every week we're discovering new things. So uh, let me, oops, go to my next slide. So class, uh, classroom screen. Uh, so there's a great video from Esmeralda Salgado. I've, uh, you can grab the, the link on the QR code here. I really recommend. Uh, so that's a website I, I, I've, we've used before in the, in the real, in, you know, in class, uh, in the classroom setting, we've used dice. Um, I never really understood the power of the website uh, when, when we are in, in the classroom, uh, but now in the context of live lesson, it's really, really powerful. Uh, it's really low prep, so I tend to plan, uh, well, plan to press, set up my uh, screen a couple of minutes before my lesson. So um, uh, you can embed media, uh, there's quite a few tools that are useful, like uh, the name randomizer, the timer. So the way so that's an example of a lesson I did uh, on Thursday and Friday with your seven. Um, so I took a snip photo image of our sentence builder for the PowerPoint and I pasted it on my uh, classroom screen. I like to put my background of my um, virtual classroom, but you've got plenty of backgrounds available. Um, to use or you can put your own images. Uh, I pasted a photo of, uh, again, um, a photo image of um, our uh, live lesson etiquette. So that was done originally on the PowerPoint and I displayed it uh, a few times uh, the first two weeks, but now I'm just copying uh, on classroom screen. Um, so these lessons pa particularly, we were in, yeah, in this lesson we were, um, teaching the time and classroom routine. I embedded an interactive clock from uh, Toy Theater. And uh, I remembered um, this little website uh, from using it with my son and teaching the time in, time in uh, lockdown one. Um, and it was great. I could move the handles uh, and I, for students, they could see the words of the sentence builder. I could manipulate the clock, uh, use the name randomizer um, to, um, for students to participate. And uh, the way we realized that, um, so, so I've only been using classroom screen for the last couple of weeks. Um, and the name randomizer has been really useful as I realized that some students are now logging on because it's compulsory for them to, uh, they are registered at the beginning of each lesson. Um, but we want each lesson 
to be interactive, we want students to engage, we want students to be actively participating in our live lesson. And I don't really want them to be behind their screen listening to me because they can easily drift off um, if they don't have any you know, incentive to do anything. So now they're quite familiar to it. I paste my um, all the name of the class very quickly. We've exported from Sims all the classes uh, that we teach. So we've got a, a spreadsheet with all the details of all our classes. Um, and I paste the register. And then I would, uh, for example, say something in French from the sentence builder and ask four, five people from the generator to um, write the answer. Well, actually, I ask everybody to write their answer, and then I ask the five people to paste it in the chat. So the first time I did it, I only asked one person, and if that person is absent or if that person is not, is away from his keyboard, uh, then he kind of, um, you lose a bit of pace and you're waiting. Um, so it's quite nice to actually uh, ask five, six, and now students know that they are going to be asked to answer and they are kept on their toes. Uh, so that's classroom screen, which I really enjoy in the live lesson uh, because it's nice and easy to set up. So ch the chat, uh, we've been using it. Um, so in the classroom etiquette, you can see one of the things I've been uh, trying to um, uh, to um, say to my students is to use the chat uh, to answer questions and not to chat because the chat can become uh, really clogged up uh, with everything. So um, we, I would use it sometimes, for example, as a progress check. So at the beginning of the meeting, so I like to paste a link on Menti, I do a one little starter. And then I would have already pasted all my um, activities. So number one, learn vocab. Number two, complete all the activities, Quizlet, language net assignment. And I'm going to ask my students, so that would be, for example, the second lesson of the three lessons of the week. Okay, where are you at with all your weekly work? Can you put your hands up if you've learned your vocab? Uh, have you completed task two? Have you done your language net assignment? And just for them, uh, you know, to see how they're progressing. Um, we've used a chat for starter activities. So I would uh, present the word cloud, for example, uh, with our vocabulary and ask students to uh, translate any words they know, um, whilst I allow people uh, in from the lobby. And it's nice for students to be straight away doing something because the beginning are a bit uh, silted when people are coming uh, in late. Um, we've been doing faulty echo. So again, rather than clicking the um, the chat, I will write myself faulty echo and I, uh, I will say a sentence in French and I tell my student if I pronounce it correctly, you put a thumbs up. If you hear it's mispronounced, you put a sum, uh, like an angry face or a sad face. Uh, we've been doing sans nonsense uh, as well. So again, uh, rolling the randomizer from FlippyT, I put in the chat sans, and if the sentence makes sense, thumbs up, if not, angry face. We've been using the chat uh, for students to translate uh, or create sentences from the sentence builder. Um, and, you know, um, straight away with the emoji, we give feedback. Uh, Sometimes we, uh, we ask students to give feedback uh, on um, each other, on their peers' work. So Spiral uh, and Menti, uh, we've used it quite a lot. Menti is really nice as a, just an icebreaker, little starter activity. I paste the link. Uh, they're both, um, both websites. Um, are very easy to access via link. Uh, so on Spiral, you create a class, you share a class code. Uh, so my student, my year seven, um, now they are used to do, to go on it, uh, you know, every week. Um, before even I share the link on the chat, some of my students are already on it because it's the same code every week. My year seven is TPPP, uh, for example, and. Um, and whilst Menti allow me to do, like, um, I, we like the word cloud, uh, but there's plenty of different formats as well and more um, options um, for to do. But we like it to, as a little starter, to recap on the vocab we've done before. Uh, full sentences, that was a Spanish example. And uh, Spiral, I like to combine it with classroom screen. I use the timer, for example, on class, uh, classroom screen, and I will give students one minute or two minutes to write an extended sentence with an opinion justification um, on 
um, spiral. So rather than using it for translation, I will uh, set them um, a timer. And again, that helps keeping the pace in the live lesson, which sometimes is quite tricky with students' co uh, connection dropping off. Um, and students have found it quite useful. And the, because there's a timer, not ev like every single answer, I ask students, okay, when you hear the sound of the timer clicking, paste your answer, and then you can review everybody's work um, at the time and discuss answers. And then again, on classroom screen, there's a text box where you can uh, write down and correct um, um, uh, spelling errors. So that's our really uh, go-to's. And finally, uh, so Blue Cat and Quizlet Live. So our students are really, really a uh, fan of those uh, two websites. Uh, fantastic for retrieval practice, really competitive. And it brings a sense of cohesiveness uh, that we've lost in this uh, lockdown. Um, and uh, you can sometimes um, students get into the chat and talk about uh, who's winning. Uh, we are pasting photos of the winners in the chat um, or uh, that's an example of Blue Cat. So I presented on Blue Cat a couple of weeks ago with uh, Rachel Higpies, uh, if you want to know more. Uh, but both websites, very, very easy to set up. Um, you share a link with students. And again, it's uh, they join straight away. And students, you know, wants to come to the live lesson because uh, they know that they're going to get um, to do a game on Blue Cat on Quizlet Live. Uh, so that's kind of the format where we are at with our live lesson. And so it's um, really a mixture of pre-recorded uh, material, all the tasks already laid out on class notebook. So students can work independently at their own pace. And <coughs> sorry, uh, us using the live lesson to break the monotony of the lockdown to um, model the vocabulary and to um, do competitive activities, interactive activities. Uh, so that's more pictures, yeah, on all the um, uh, Quizlet and Bluecat. Uh, so that's it from us. Uh, so obviously, uh, all the credit goes to uh, all of you. Um, well, nothing is really original. Our ideas are not original. Our templates that we've uh, shared or we uh, rejigged are not original. Uh, everything has been shared uh, very generously by uh, by everyone uh, here, and we're really thankful to uh, to have had this support. Um, so. We will be sharing this uh, presentation and all the templates that we've made. We've also uh, got a Flippity links Padlet with all our links. We need to actually put our spreadsheets onto uh, Jane's Weklet as well. And uh, that's it. So I'm going to stop sharing now and come back. <coughs> so I think, uh, yeah, I just realized the time we're a bit over time. It's fine. That was amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. You should see the chat and the and the um the tweets as well. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, yeah, your 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 vision and how you put it all together. Um, just absolutely brilliant stuff. Really, uh, inspiring. I think really inspiring to see how you Thank put you. it all together and the and the the structure and how you're focusing on the pedagogy and all the different ideas. Um, and the way you're con yeah incorporating Flipperty and Quizlet and even even people who are really into their ed tech um, were learning lots of new things today. So it's really fantastic. Good. Lovely. But I do think it's a real team effort. And um, like we are a really strong team. We've been uh, working uh, for a long time together. And, um, and we couldn't just uh, create all those resources. And um, if we were just you know, on the standalone on, on our own. So it's really a team effort. Everybody contributes equally. Uh, th there's a very, very strong sharing ethos in our, and, you know, supportive ethos in our department. And that's really, I'm really grateful. Yeah, I think that really shines through. Pe there were people in the department, sorry, in the chat saying, I wish I was part of such a fantastic sharing department because uh, it, it shows. And having having been to Swayze as well, I know how, well, you work together and, and it's very, really clear now that you're doing all these fantastic uh, online teaching. In fact, someone said that you have remote teaching uh, nailed, which is just brilliant. Oh, someone <laughs> just said, are you hiring <laughs> as well? <laughs> That's great. 
Uh, we do have lots of questions, but I'm sure um, Helen would like to do the photo shoot first. Yes, and then I'd we'll like do the... also add my thanks. Absolutely I'm sorry, of course. Uh, just really, really good. All of the ideas and the fact that, yes, we can see how every... it's not just you collaborating as a department. Everybody, MFL, Twitter, Arti, AWL, everybody's collaborating and you're recognising ideas, but you have really brought it together. You've managed it, haven't you? And Sabine, you've obviously persuaded people in your department to do it as well. You know, you said at one point, I have the luxury of having this. Well, it's something you've, worked, you've all worked at. So really well done. So I think for everybody to put their hands together, open up their web, their webcams, their mics. And can, can you give people permission, Helen, to turn on their microphones? Oh, I've got to give you permission to put on your work. Yes. <laughs> I, always forget. I get all carried away, don't I? And then I don't do it. So uh, now participants to unmute. So now you can unmute and make a lot of noise while I take pictures of you. You've got to keep it <laughs> while I keep taking pictures, right? So I'm starting with the first of four screens now. So smiling. One, two, three. I've done drawing my honey. And anybody's allowed to speak. <laughs> We're just so generous. I'm on slide. The next one. You don't know if you, it could be you. So everyone's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my God. And I'm going on to the third one as well. One, two, three. There we go. And there's the last one. One, two, three. Thank you very much. Cool. That's great. So really, really, thank you. And thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody, for yeah. coming on a Saturday. Really, uh, yeah, it's really nice to, um, oh, that's to see you. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, fabulous. And there's Amanda Salt. Yes, I, I, I ran out of superlatives. I, I found I was repeating brilliant, brilliant, brilliant the whole way through <laughs> the chat. It was so good. Thank you so much. Wow, well, thank you. Sorry, I was really yeah. conscious of the time, so sorry if I went really fast. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. No problem at all. And I know and, people and, have to leave at some point or whatever, but this is going to be, um, well, this has been recorded. It's still being recorded. So Joe Dale will be putting it on his, Joe Dale. <laughs> we know you're Joe Dale. Joe will be putting it on his YouTube channel and I link that to a page where I'll be putting the link to your PowerPoint, the link to the pictures that I've just taken and I will copy and paste all of the chat. So normally we try and get that done either later on tonight or tomorrow morning, you'll get that. So thank you very much for your generosity as well, Sabine, for and well, Rebecca for yeah. sharing that and for to Joe, obviously, for posting this onto his YouTube channel. So no problem. And I always do say as well, thank you formally to Joe for bringing everybody together like this and um, really, really enjoyable Saturday afternoon There's, you know, over well over 100 people here. So. Yeah, I think we had about 117 at the, at the top, which is brilliant. Well, very well deserved. Should we do some questions now, Helen? Is that OK? Yes, yes. So we've got quite a few questions. Um, so we'll start off with, oh, yeah, OK. I don't know if it's possible to, to, to demonstrate um, some of these but the first one was how do you add the tab uh, 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 also I know that so uh, Rebecca you did a great job in answering some of these in the chat but I thought if it's okay to demonstrate some yes. of these yes um so the first one was how do you add the tab virtual classrooms to teams okay yeah. so <laughs> um so my so, some people have got PTSD from from the team on this <laughs> virtual classroom. Uh, so uh, first you would create uh, your PowerPoint and it's quite important is to have it saved on your OneDrive because you, uh, when you share your PowerPoint, uh, you get your shareable link. Uh, so your PowerPoint is just like virtual classroom template, whatever you want uh, it to look like. And it needs to be hyperlinked to your OneDrive folder where you're going to save your classroom, uh, your PowerPoint lessons. So we've got five, um, well, a bit more. For French, we've got five virtual classroom uh, PowerPoint lesson with each hyperlink to a one, to a like your seven folder, your eight folder, nine, 10, and 11. And then once, so shall I share my screen and show you? Would that be okay? I think that, because obviously for, for visual learners and all that, I think yeah, um, I know. people would and find I that really. Also, if, if you could distinguish between this idea about it being on your OneDrive, as opposed to a SharePoint folder, because I think that's the bigger difference that I've had to learn. Okay, uh, so you see, uh, Helen, you're more, more technical than me because uh, I only use my OneDrive and I'm not quite uh, oh, okay. competent on the share, SharePoint. And so I think that is important for people to know that if you are familiar with using SharePoint, 
um, just because something is in the SharePoint folder, which is shared by people, it, this bit that you're going to show doesn't necessarily work. I think that's okay. Yeah, so something if you are so here, so I've got, for example, here are all my documents. Okay, so it's very messy. Uh, all my documents are here. Uh, but when I want to share a PowerPoint link, I'll go on to here via my OneDrive, and you should all see a little uh, cloud, blue cloud, and here I can see all my documents um, here. So that's uh, how I would get my, for example, my um, PowerPoint for my virtual classroom. So that's the TIG presentation, but you get the shareable link for a PowerPoint like that by the three dots, share, and for the virtual classroom, What's important is that uh, you share with anyone with the link. Uh, you don't allow editing. And then you apply, and you can copy link. So you get a, a, a link that you can copy. So I would normally open uh, any Word document and uh, click, and here's my link. And then um, I actually wrote it earlier today. Uh, and then the. Um, the, you will need to add a, a formula for that link to become a website. So that link is uh, AMP. Do you remember, Becky? Oh, Joe knows it. <laughs> right, it's, in, I'll, it's in the chat. Let, let me find it in the chat. It's uh, uh, AMP, um, I think, uh, equal. I closed my email with it, sorry. There's so much chat. I'm trying to scroll back. Right, right at the very beginning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are we still recording or not? Yeah, yeah, we, that... yeah, we are. If that's okay. Oh, okay, so I just I can pause recording. Yeah, yeah. can you pause recording for yeah, a second? Yeah, just one minute. Mm, so I've got all my virtual classroom here. So virtual classroom, you have ten resources. Virtual classroom eleven. Um, so that's year 10. So that's my colleague, Margaret, who is planning the year 10 work. So this actually, she set that up, but she made me a co-owner. And that's, again, quite important. So for example, uh, my virtual classroom, this folder, uh, I, give, I gave access uh, to colleagues in the department. So if they want to go into this folder, they can save or edit or put any work into it. So the plan was originally, if one of us is ill um, because with COVID uh, or cannot work uh, and therefore can't anymore uh, plan or resource, um, the work is meant to be planning. I can, uh, anyone I can step in and access their folder uh, because we've got co-ownership of each OneDrive folder from the virtual classroom. So each, so the way it's written, so you've got a folder for class uh, remote work and we label it week two, week three. That's my year nine uh, virtual classroom. And again, that's what student access. So I've only gave access to this folder for my students. students. And what's nice on OneDrive if, is you can see, so if I go here via my OneDrive uh, very briefly, you can see which student has viewed, uh, so view online, So that's the same files. Uh, so my virtual classroom um, for year 11, for example, I can here, three dots, I can manage access and I can give permission. So right now, Becky's got ownership, Margaret and Jess with the French team. So they can all edit and um, they can all have access to my class. But also when I go on to, so I'm gonna stop that. When I go on to the folder uh, and each lesson, I can see how many views, um, how many people have viewed my lesson. Oops. And that's quite useful sometimes. So here, I know there's certain views, uh, Luca and Anne, well, that's the name of students. Uh, two students have viewed uh, my lesson. And it's quite, it can be quite powerful. So, okay. so do you change the PowerPoint each for each lesson? So no. Like the virtual, so, the, no. Uh, so the virtual classroom has been set up in September. So I'm just going to stop sharing. The virtual classroom has been set up once. So once you've put it in, it's there forever. And it's always linked to the OneDrive. And therefore, that's what makes it really nice and neat uh, when where every week I create a PowerPoint for a lesson and I save it in this OneDrive folder, which has been hyperlinked to the PowerPoint, which has been turned into a website, added to it tab 
teams on teams. Uh, so there's no there's nothing else to do. So I just create my lesson and put it in this folder, and any student can access it without me having to send it, share it, uh, upload it to each team. Um, that's it. Right. So, so you, do you mean that you have in the folder that you've hyperlinked from the PowerPoint to? You'll then put the, the the resources that you want the students to access yeah. for that lesson and then the so, next lesson you'll take the resources out from the previous lesson and put new ones in is that what well, you mean? Well no we, we do week one week two week three because some students see if students are ill or are um, you know are not completing the work for one week then they can still always access so after after so after the first half term for example we've uh, after doing week one week two week three week four we've created a folder autumn term and then we started again um you know like uh, spring right term. so the hyperlink from the powerpoint is just going to like a general folder and then the students then have to access the folder for that lesson is that what you mean so if, well, uh, if they go if they click on that virtual once they've opened the virtual classroom in the teams tab it, yeah. because it uh, they just click on the hyperlinked whiteboard as such which takes them straight to the onedrive folder so you take um, them to a folder yeah. which in this folder, you've got the weekly lessons. Yeah. Right, I see. And, and then, all... So you're just updating the content yeah. in that folder yeah. each, gotcha. And then so you tell them where they need to go to, right. Yeah, so yeah. we've trained our students in September to, to we, we've said, okay, do not email us if you are ill um, for work, go to your Teams, go to the virtual classroom, access the PowerPoint lesson. If you're stuck, then right. you email us just to cut down on, because we were getting students at eight o'clock. I miss, I'm not here. We were getting five, six. We were teaching full day and picking up the email at five o'clock. And then students have been sat at home uh, without any work because we hadn't seen the email. So that was a way to uh, train our students to access the work, even you know if we haven't responded. But also, and, um, and that was the same principle with Quizlet mm -hmm. to put it on Teams so that student, uh, we were saying, well, you know, if you can't do the work, if you don't know what to do, uh, if we are not responding, you know that on Teams, you've got your Quizlet and automatically it updates uh, this week's vocabulary. Right, right. But you have, you have to remove each each document that you put into that folder because, of course, then they're accessing it. Um, we need to remember to right click and change the properties so that they can't edit. Yeah. Happens. Right. So, so basically all the content is there for like um a half term let's yeah. say but you just yeah. made yeah I, yeah i've got it now i understand now right lovely and right I if we, we go yeah on sorry the right thing because i'd stopped the filming and then i started it perhaps a bit late to capture things but then also to say that i stopped the live stream and then i realized that people who were in the live stream and there had been about 19 of them must have thought the thing had stopped so just to put, i want to put it on record now i apologize to everybody <laughs> if I appeared to get rid of you, but there are, we've got some people back again. So just let me know anytime when you want me to stop or start recording, it's recording at the moment. Okay, fantastic. Okay, that's lovely. If we could do, uh, I think this one has been covered by Rebecca in the chat anyway, but um, someone is saying, if you're linking the virtual classroom to documents on OneDrive, how do you stop the kids from altering the original version of documents? So it's then that's what Becky was explaining. When yeah. we uh, save the PowerPoint, we make sure that it's, um, uh, no one can edit. So when, uh, so yeah, should I demonstrate now or? Uh, I think we probably covered that actually when yeah. you demonstrated before. Yes. I think that's okay. Just that's, that's, but that's obviously really, really important. Okay. Um, right. Great question. Does it make the class notebook? I think this is Amanda Salt asked this question. Does it make the class notebook massive uh, in relation to file size and syncing when you're doing these sorts of activities? Well, no. We're, we're not sure actually, because we've had issue with sound um, and we're dis debating whether um, putting to, well, sometimes it's worked beautifully and everything gets pasted and it's perfect. Uh, the sound we have, we've, we, we're we still working on it. We are recording our audio. Half of the student gets and can access the audio. Half of the student can't for some reasons. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we are now trying, well, I think we're going to use Vocaro and record on Vocaro. Um, just because it's Helen sorry do the streaming that helen showed us the other day oh yeah and then i've tried that helen actually this week i was really happy with it mm -hmm. um so uh, so it's it is a learning curve so and the issue with class notebook is when it works it's beautiful and it's really really a, a fantastic feature but there's some glitches and i we don't know whether it's because we're using teams and we everything we go via teams first 
because you do, I don't think people have the same issue when they just use a one note and distribute pages within one note that mm. we are experiencing. But we are too, too new to... I think it's probably, if I can interrupt, yeah, you, yeah. It's probably something that you do need to ask your tech team about. Because as I said at the last workshop, it may be all right at the moment because you're starting off. But if you've got a year's worth mm. of PowerPoint images in every child's class notebook, which is having to sync with your notebook, that's where the advice that we had from, um, I think, Sandra right at the beginning, um, who'd had a bit more experience, was just it could be that you start doing it so that they're writing their answers actually into the notebook itself and not onto pictures from okay. PowerPoint. But the trouble then is that you lose all that beautiful, beautiful artwork that you've got. So I was thinking that as you were showing, I was thinking, mine looks so dull next to yours. <laughs> but it is this business of just being aware that that's what really could slow things down because it's loading up that image. In, yeah. And especially if you're in a, a state school where we've got, what, 1,400 kids, it might be a bit different if you're in a much smaller school with perhaps a very much better network so it depends on your network yeah. doesn't it and the size of your class but just be aware that every time if you've got 30 kids using that same notebook it's loading yeah. out i think in like september to december we've only used it for prep so we were putting a gcse question and students were writing so there was no real images but now we are in the remote setting we want students to well we, we are trying to reciprocate uh, re replicate the, the exercise book and what they would do uh, in the classroom with matching and that's why we are putting the powerpoint uh, and hopefully we won't be in this situation for too long yeah i mean but, you could have the powerpoint couldn't you as an embedded powerpoint so they can just click through it or as open yeah. window so that it still isn't them having to but if you're wanting them to write on what is on your PowerPoint, mm. that's where no, that wouldn't work. Mm. Cool. Um, I'm just in relation to to using Class Notebook, one of the questions was how how easy it was it to get the students to train them up on Class Notebook. Um, it took me a few months to get my students on board. That was one of the the person that asked well, the question. So uh, that's something where we obviously we started in June. Uh, Jane Bassnett, uh, I contacted her and she uh, she gave us uh, some some of her time uh, with Becky and Alison, uh, our uh, head of uh, Spanish, and. I worried all summer about, about it. Um, and first week of September, what we did is uh, we created the student guide that was actually shared from our neighboring school. Um, we've, so the IT department created it with all the steps for students to launch their class notebook from home with our um, CMAT address. Um, so, and it was actually very easy. We didn't really have uh, much, like I thought it would take long and students would not be confident, but because they've been used to use Teams and we haven't asked them to use Class Notebook, we've distributed pages via Teams. So we've never trained them to download the app and navigate their Class Notebook. That might be the next step. Uh, at this uh, point, because they are so familiar with uh, Teams and the school wants us to assign work, um, so the student didn't know anything. You know, they, they wouldn't have, some wouldn't have maybe uh, noticed that they were working on class notebook for, we were distributing a page for them to do some, some work. But what I found useful is um, because of course they've been doing their work through the assignment link. So effectively just opening a link and writing on it, they've got used to that like Sabine suggested and then because of the live lessons now now they've got familiar with that I've started to introduce to them the class notebook tab that's yeah. at the top of their teams and shown them how to then just click on the prep folder if it's homework or click on the remote learning folder and they can then see all their pages and they're like oh okay so now they can go back and review their work much more efficiently Fantastic. That sounds amazing. Um, if, if you've got time, we've got quite a few uh, more questions. Let's have a... Uh, 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 right, interesting. So uh, is it a local authority policy that everyone in your uh, mat or your area uses Teams? Uh, have your students come from primary schools that have used Teams? Yeah, well, so... Um... Yes, yeah, so we've, we're using Teams as a school. It's a trust. Uh, and as I said, it was brought up, I think, maybe five years ago um, 
but it wasn't uh, used at all apart from being a filing cabinet for our resources. Right. Um, so, and students, some students uh, we've noticed, well, not every single primary school at Teams, but quite a few because they are part of our trust as well. Uh, some students were using Teams already in primary, so I would say 40%. So our year seven have, have been fantastic at uh, using Teams and the class notebook. And I would say they are the most tech savvy of all the year groups. Mm. Um, and class notebook because a lot of students have got iPads at home. We don't have iPad in school, but you can tell uh, they like the drawing, the matching, and they do the work really nice and beautifully yeah. in their in their um, devices from home now. Fantastic, that's lovely, brilliant. Um, if it's okay to go on to Flipperty, so um, somebody asked, can you print? I don't know the answer to this at all. Can you print the activities from Flipperty? Yeah. Yes, if you scroll right down to the bottom of say where the fashion. <laughs> was um there is so, a... so for all the activities or just the flashcard ones or um i don't know the answer to that I myself actually i'm genuinely answer I asking many of them i've seen i've not done it but i've seen many of them have a um, just quickly looking now i think they have a print button yeah. yeah and okay. also you can screen so i snip and um the screen so for example for the word scramble um, so from my flashcards, I just did an environment with year 11. Um, I, one week, I just took uh, like 10 words from the, so I didn't take all the words that came up, but just 10, like all the modal verbs. And I took all the nouns um, that come up. So you can, you know, screen, uh, like steep your screen and mm. get then an image that you could, well, that we put on a PowerPoint or that you could, same with the word searches. I just take the image. And it's quite good quality and we put it on the PowerPoint. Fantastic. Yeah, just on that point, I've been exploring the last week on the Snip and Sketch um, Windows 10 app, which is basically the same as the Snipping Tool, mm -hmm. just the updated version. And it, you can uh, customize the print screen button on your keyboard. So when you tap that, it launches Snip and Sketch. And then you then can just move the crosshairs over the selection you want to mm. copy. And it's 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 really nice. So it's like it's like the snipping tool, but just the updated version. Um, I've tweeted about it as well. But that's yeah. uh yeah, that's fantastic. Um, thank you. That's lovely. I love the way you're using Flipperty. You know, the you know when you had like the the sets of activities that were like hyperlinked with I think was it the flashcards does it do it does it do that automatically so once you create the flashcards it creates all these activities yeah. based off the set it's in the flashcards straight cards, away yeah. yeah in the more right. in the more tab on the flippity flashcards yeah. and and awesome. that's something we're training our students to do so in live lesson we show them the the flashcard and we're saying okay students if you want if you want to do any extra work go to the more tabs and do those activities interactively uh, like at home on your um, Fantastic. So without us creating anything, that gives tons of uh, work for students to do if they want to. Excellent. Um, Nikki was asking about um, adding the Quizlet to Teams tab, but that's just a question of clicking the plus icon again, isn't it? And then adding yeah. Quizlet and then... Well, no, uh, adding websites. So uh, if you... So we've added right. the, the... Each team, we've add, added the link, the Quizlet link of each class. So when I created right. my classes on Quizlet... Each class is on Quizlet has got um, um, a link, an invitation. A, a, an in, invitation link. So rather than us giving students an invitation link, we directly paste it into the team tabs uh, by creating a website again. Right. I suggest what I might do after this is like I did with Sandra's and with Jane's, because it's full of so many things. I think for us to have um, alongside the on the web page as long alongside the recording if we almost have a time as to this is where this bit's explained and this bit's explained because it's so brilliant to have had you actually show us how to do that mm. so nikki that's what we'll do when we've got it because i want to go back and look at <laughs> it we just say it's at this point you have to go to, in order to see the the principle i think that was such an important principle that you've just said about you you're not putting the app in you're putting in a web no. address so yeah. we'll make sure we do that nikki <laughs> Awesome. I want to do that too. <laughs> awesome. Just on that point as well, is it is there any way you could demo how to do the morphing that you talked about the mor the morphing PowerPoint? Because yeah. I know Helen was a uh, very I, I said I put in a, a a link to a tweet from Mike Tolson, bless him, about how I to can, morph. But I'm happy to watch that on that one. It's uh, of course, but, but it'd be lovely to if you for the benefit of everyone watching I, now, I mean, if I it's possible it's to give us a. a <laughs> Yeah, it's it's similar to um magic move on Keynote. In uh, it's the uh, it's the 
Microsoft equivalent of Magic Move on keynotes, but it's uh, yeah. it's very nice. Okay. So Becky, Becky is a morphing queen. <laughs> Morphing uh, green. Know, there we are. <laughs> um, hang on, I want that one open. I don't want to uh, no, see that. So, I want the different. Sorry, I'm not. That's all right. Not oh yeah, um, Marie Alleroux reminded us that Jérôme uh, Norg as well did a did a good uh, video on morphing as well. But it'd be lovely to see it. It'd be lovely to see it now. Okay, so um, I'll show you it in action and then I'll show you how I did it. So imagine you've got your question, you know, your English and your French or whatever to match up and images and the kids will do their answers either through letters and numbers or lines. And then um, if you're doing a lesson or a live lesson or if they're using the virtual PowerPoint, then what happens is that beautiful sort of smooth transition. So, and it's, I used to <laughs> think, <laughs> so uh. what, what you need to do is said there in the slide, essentially, you need to um, copy this slide um, and then go to transitions at the top and press this morph button. Right. Then you um, paste the slide in here and at this point, then you sort of, all you need to do is drag your answers to the right place. And I added the arrows. Um, so if I do a demo now, um, uh, let, uh, okay. So here, I, I copy that slide and oh, it's on the morph already. I'll paste it in here and then I just simply just move, I'll move them over here just to show you there's some movement going on but the other thing you can do is like you can even enlarge things um so if I oh, that didn't enlarge it at all and uh, let's go back here oh it's probably because I need to click there you go right, just I've done, I've done some changes so there look some mm -hmm. changes there seems to be some changes let's put it in presentation mode so you can if you want to zoom in on a particular point um there we go it just is as smooth as that and you can sort of say now oh now let's focus on box d for example um but there's there's other tricks that you can do with zooming in on things and stuff um on powerpoint through the, the latest version which is brilliant i love it yeah i think that's what i think we need i personally would like to have a whole <laughs> webinar on powerpoint because i know we do all of these wonderful other things but powerpoint is what most people use as their absolute yeah. basis don't they yeah. and i have learned so much recently through jerome through you and i know i've i've got to have a campaign at home because i haven't got the latest powerpoint so that i'll start that over dinner can i just say just before like an hour before the presentation i've used one of the tricks that jerome shows which is a dictate um dictate option on PowerPoint. So he showed um, the dictate option on Word. And just uh, whilst I was going through the presentation, I noticed there was also a dictate um, on PowerPoint. So I recorded and automatically all everything I said dropped into the, the comment box below the PowerPoint. So then I had my presentation done and Rias didn't need to type it. And it's really, really powerful. And it's true, there's so many, like we're discovering with PowerPoint. I think we need that and I think those who are keen perhaps we I know we've got quite a lot on soon but perhaps half I mean nobody's going anywhere I'm not going anywhere so half time, <laughs> I'd be really happy to have a let's have a powerpoint fest well Be Becky is a super pro on the powerpoints oh, yeah. I learned it mostly from Joe <laughs> <laughs> well there we are that's lovely that's lo okay I think we if we do one one final question if that's okay which is how do the students do them uh, do marking in class notebook do they self mark or do you provide the answers so we've been uh, so we've been talking about that as a team. Uh, so there's um, we've been so the class work right now. We are uh, making sure we are commenting and commenting and putting a praise uh, sticker on uh, each week. We wouldn't normally mark the class work. Um, we so a lot of the tasks are quite accessible and it's you know like the matching and that's what we've seen. So what we're marking is every two weeks we are uh, asking students to write a paragraph. So we are marking this. Uh, like we would do normally, um, feeding back and uh, students have got close the gap activity to do and they've got to answer in green and they, 
Well, they don't all do it, but we are training them to do that. Something we've been thinking and looking at uh, for year seven is to pre-record answers. So to do a final little video um, where we would maybe either go through a task and uh, do a whole um, class uh, activity and uh, to check answers, or we're using the live lessons to go through answers. But uh, yeah. Fantastic. Lovely. Well, I think uh, as it is quarter past five now, <laughs> I think the time has come to say thank you so much for sharing all your amazing ideas and very generously your, your templates. It's been just been asked in the chat and Rebecca, you very kindly you've said yes, uh, absolutely. So you're going to have everyone's going to have everything, the templates, the recording, uh, the chat. Yeah, it's just it's just awesome. Uh, and if you're not following Swayze the MFL, uh, you, you have to right now because uh, you, you're, you're all amazing and working fantastically as a team. It would be lovely to have other departments presenting how they're, they're using uh, different ideas around remote teaching as well. But thank you so much, Sabine well, and Rebecca. It's been well, really thank wonderful. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Joe. Yes, welcome. Thank you so much. We'll stop the recording now then. Cool. I'll stop recording there.